So this is my one of my breeding pairs of clowns. One is a onyx male perculia, and one is just a regular perculia uh, without that much black. Um, they've been together about nine years. Usually uh, I got them very tiny together. So um, they've been growing together for the past nine years basically. And um, so what I've been doing just with them is, as you can see, their home consists of two flower pots and two tiles. It's literally just to make it so they can lay on something soft and they um, pick an easy, accessible item that I can just p uh, pull out on hatch night. Um, so basically what I do is I feed them three times a day, um, the fertility frenzy. You can kind of see here in the corner uh, a little plastic um, acrylic tube. It's just like an old BioCube skimmer that I made into like a food defroster. Um, basically so I can just put that fertility frenzy in here. It slowly melts and it slowly disperses it throughout the water. Um, just so I don't have to put the water and melt it in a cup and then pour it and all that stuff and then it doesn't really get eaten um, so it was just something I made just to prevent cloudiness and all that stuff because I never liked uh, putting frozen cubes in water and all that stuff just because it's more of a hassle um, so here like I said you know if you're gonna get a pair Obviously, you want to look for one that's been mated already, so they're a pair, because then that saves you time from the clown, you know, claiming dominance and trying to make change from a male to female, all that stuff. That happens over time, so it's not something that happens overnight. Um, so, like I said, I would recommend a pair that already been together or a breeding pair if you can find one. If not, you'll have to make a mating pair. Um, but here, like I said, this is how I pretty much feed the three times a day. So now, like you'll see, I'll start to fall out the food. And then they start eating it. Uh, I only feed that food selectively just to get the uh, just to get them nice and bulky right before hatch. Um, that way they're eating a lot and um, they're producing nice clutch sizes. So pretty much that's just here. Again, if they breed here on the tiles, it's easy to take out. Flower pot, I can just switch it with another one. Um, but for the most part, they're on a 12 day schedule, meaning they'll breed um, about seven or eight days, they'll be ready to hatch. I pull the tile and then usually five, like four or five days later, they're on to another clutch. So this is what I've been doing that works for me for this pair. I have other pairs, but this was my original pair to start with. Um, and so they have their own home. Uh, I have a skimmer on it and I do frequent water changes. You know, when you're feeding this type of food, your water will get cloudy faster. So that's why I installed the skimmer and a lot of carbon and chemipure that I change weekly. Um, and then that's also to the purpose of making this whole little defroster was so I'm not making the water more milky by mixing the, um, trying to defrost it in a cup and shaking it too much. So this just lets it come out throughout the day slowly. Um, I'll show you more of a close up on it, more into the video, but it's just literally two things attached with a suction cup and there's holes drilled into it. So the current, you can kind of see it here. So the food's in there and it's literally like a Gatorade cap. And you can see there's holes around the rim. So literally the current from the cube is pushing the food around throughout the day and it slowly falls out through here. That's the underside of it. So it just falls out throughout, um, you know, when I'm feeding. 
and as you can see kind of like right there it starts to come out and then the clowns are start to eat it so that's it for this part of the video i'm gonna try to get when they're actually laying eggs um just pretty much what it'll look like and the process of it so you know it's a really cool thing to watch if you haven't seen it before so once these guys are starting to lay eggs we'll get a quick you know sped up time lapse of it and go from there so this is the food that i've been using it's uh let's see it's ideal for breeding clownfish um, it's made by LRS, which is Larry's Reef Services. So it's enhanced nutrition for breeding marine fish. It's called a fertility frenzy. He calls it the who's your daddy blend. Uh, basically, this is what I've been using, which I switched to basically. Um, before I was using frozen cubes and uh, just, you know, mix of like mices, brine, piscine mices, uh, squid, stuff like that. Um, you know, my clutch sizes were about the size of a nickel, not too crazy. Uh, but then switching to this food, um, I noticed a huge difference in quality and in the size of the clutches the clowns were laying. Um, so some of the ingredients you can see here. Um, we got scallop, shrimp, squid, cuttlefish, perch, white fish, krill, mysis, clam, oyster, seaweed, uh, fatty acids, absorbic acids, uh, probiotics, uh, guaranteed, prude is 15%, fat is 3%, fiber 1%, moisture 82%. Um, it's made in North Carolina. And basically, like I said, I stock up in the freezer with these because uh, I get them in bulk. So, um, Basically, as you can see here, I kind of just chip off a piece. Um, and then this is what I stick in this little do it uh, DIY defroster a little. I made out of an old BioCube skimmer. Um, so I've been using this food and this is what I get for my clowns. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is a little bit more on the expensive side. Um, one bag is probably around thirty dollars and this is an eight ounce flat pack so as you can see it's just pretty much frozen uh, I keep about you know I buy them every couple of months so I buy about eight um, I'm down to these are my last four so um, pretty much this is what I've been using and I'll show you you'll see in the rest of the video uh, before switching and then after switching just the different clutches I was getting, um, quality in the fish, um, and pretty much all that. So, again, this is what I've been using. Who's your daddy blend? LRS Fertility Frenzy. So, let's just continue to the rest of the video, and then we'll see pretty much the differences. So, this part of the video, basically, what we're seeing here is they are heavily cleaning the area they're basically gonna lay eggs right now today and what they're gonna do is just vigorously clean wherever they want um, they usually switch between the tiles flower pot or other things like I mentioned but uh, lately they've been doing it on the wall in the back which is basically the bio cube like uh, filter section um, which is right behind that flower pot area so you can see she's basically picking at the wall the male's gonna come back pick at it again and they're just pretty much gonna just clean it clean it clean it cuz they're ready to lay the eggs um, so you're gonna just pretty much see for the next uh, minute or so um, they're gonna start cleaning and then like a little time lapse of uh, probably five minutes worth of them which is right now just basically cleaning back and forth back and forth and then you're just gonna see right now where they're finalizing pretty much the end of their cleaning 
and which starts the clip of them actually laying the eggs. So as we can see here, it's still a little bit of cleaning left, but again, this is uh, probably, I want to say, about an hour's worth and then just cut up into, I want to say, maybe two minutes at most. And it's pretty much the, again, as you can see, like, if she's going upside down and she's basically, um, they laid there before, so the eggs kind of like since they're capsules they pretty much like leave like a little weird residue behind and um, they hatched today is Thursday um, they hatched on Sunday the other pair um, so it's been four days so it still kind of stays there until they basically pick it off but as you can see here now this is probably a minute into like literally laying the eggs and you can see pretty much the clutch size that it's starting to form into a big circle the female just basically goes back and forth and well, like kind of wiggles her fan I mean her fins and what happens is a little tube comes out of her like center stripe and she literally goes back and forth inserting each egg into the wall and then the male follows with his tube that sticks out and follows her and basically I guess you want to say inserts the sperm into every egg and fertilizes it. So this process probably all together takes about another hour. Um, as I mentioned before when I was feeding just different frozen foods um, my clutch sizes were probably half the size of the final one you're gonna see in a of you know about 10 minutes um, basically the once I switched to the fertility frenzy I noticed like crazy crazy amount of eggs were coming before I was getting maybe two 250 at most then switching to this food I pretty much was getting around 800 I think the most I've ever counted was about 850 to 900 somewhere around there uh, it's really hard when you take a picture and you have to sit there and count each little dot uh, but I basically I put the photo in Photoshop and then every hundred eggs was a different color um, and that's kind of how I got like a rough estimate of how many eggs I was getting but you could tell a big difference when you switch into quality food versus like just finding anything in the store um, before I was feeding Piscine Mices and San Fran Brine and Marine Cuisine and everything and uh, the biggest problem I had with that was getting very very murky water um, because you do feed three four times a day if you want nice egg sizes like what you're about to see and what happens is the you know the it makes the water murky and then you gotta do water changes constantly um, this system isn't on like a whole giant system it's just literally a bio cube so you can imagine how many times I had to change the water because the amount of water that's in the bio cube system is not a lot um, hence why there's a sponge filter now in the bottom right um, that basically I was getting a lot of algae blooms so sponge filters do help for tanks like this because when you don't have a lot of rock and you don't have a lot of plant or basically water volume the algae has nowhere to go so if the algae has nowhere to go then you're just basically getting a big bloom in your tank thus you know having high risk of high ammonia or nitrates and stuff like that so uh, the sponge filter is there just to basically have a create a living space for the bacteria so your water is not looking cloudy one way you can check that it is a ammonia I mean not an ammonia uh, issue but a bacteria issue is you sit on the floor and look into your water 
looking up if you can see what looks like white waves which is kind of basically your algae then that's what the issue is but again you're feeding so much food so so frequently that you're bound to get um, algae um, the gr ones that do grow on the tiles and stuff I do leave it there just because it's extra kind of filtration and it helps um, but definitely the sponge filter and I'm doing water changes maybe um, I want to say every three or four days I'm at least changing a gallon or two just to ensure that there's tons of fresh water and it's not getting a build of ammonia or anything like that um, so basically what you're still seeing here is the clowns are literally going back and forth and then uh, what we're gonna do for this section because this section is pretty much like 17 minutes long what I'm gonna do is just fast forward it and you're gonna see just a fast pace of them basically the clutch growing bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, basically the last two minutes or so will be uh, just kind of like the final touch of just them doing the eggs um, it's you know it's a wonderful process to watch just because you're seeing each egg being inserted uh, I'll show you different angles uh, I got some from my phone video where it's a little bit different uh, but obviously this GoPro mounted it, it's on a tripod so it's just staying in one kind of um, angle so it's cool to see different like zoomed in and different angles which I'll show you and pretty much this is just a process they do for the next hour and it's just it's fascinating to watch like I said and once you know your schedule I always write the exact date that they laid when the eggs hatch technically their first day post hatch and then when's the next lay that's why uh, this video I knew was gonna happen on this day it's just they add it up um, that's another thing I really recommend is if you're gonna get into breeding have a calendar right exact days that it happened exact day that the uh, eggs hatch exact days that the um, it's supposed to happen at night and then when's the next period that it uh laid again so all that pretty much is help because then you know all right well I need to make sure my rotifers are well fed this day I need to make sure I'm having water ready for tomorrow like pretty much what you'll see is um, what I do is I grab two gallons from the parent tank and I make two gallons and I mix them together it's for the clownfish on the night that they're supposed to have hatch um, obviously they didn't do it on the tile or flower pot this time so what I'm gonna be doing is uh, using what's called the Vossen larval trap basically uh, this guy named Chad Vossen a really big breeder in the community uh, he created a trap that basically is acrylic or plexiglass I guess shaped into like a almost if you want to think of like an overflow box with a mesh covering um, with a mesh screen I'm sorry and basically what happens is the airline tube gets inserted it creates a current and on the outside you have like a tea light suction cup so on hatch night what you would literally do is put the uh, trap within inside the the hatch tank you would put the um, tea light on the outside of the tank and when you know it's gonna be hatch night you basically uh, leave it off um, like my lights turn off around 11 I know around 12 they're usually all pretty much ready and swimming in the water so at that time is when I would put the tea light they get attracted towards the light because they're newborns they are just immediately attracted to bright lights so they swim towards the trap the trap catches them into the current and then the current just keeps them inside the trap without being released back into the tank so it's a, just a super easy way to catch all the clownfish 
Um, it's around fifty dollars, but it's definitely worth it. Um, before you know, you I would basically just shine a light into the corner and use a little styrofoam cup to catch them. But that took hours, and uh, I was losing a lot of clowns that way, um, just because you're basically depriving. Obviously, you have to shut off the uh, the main pump in the tank, and you have to shut off any anything that can basically kill them. So the oxygen does get deprived pretty uh, pretty fast when there's the parents plus you know five six hundred babies swimming around uh, so with the trap it's pretty much my process is maybe 30 minutes at most before when I was trying to catch them with a cup um, I was using a lot more water uh, because when you have them in a cup you'd have to transfer them right away to the five gallon and with that you you're wasting water basically because you're pouring in and taking out pouring and taking out uh, at least with the trap it's again it's recycling the water and keeping them basically in that trap so when you go to lift it it um, it just basically uh, kind of drains to that mesh line and then you can layer you can just transfer it to the other tank um, when you're doing the hatch you always want to make sure the night before I like to set up the tank for the fry I like to make sure the water is nice and green I like to make sure the uh, uh, the bubblers going on I heat the water to about 82 degrees because that's the same temperature that the parents are in so it's basically it's like I'm preparing for it and where I can pretty much run into no errors on hatch night uh, again if you want to do this like a pretty much like a full-time thing you you know don't 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 uh, half-ass things do the right thing from the beginning you know uh, if you're gonna grow Fido grow Fido if you're gonna use uh, reeds RG complete which uh, it's another product I recommend that I've been using too um, because obviously growing two three gallons of Fido doesn't work for everybody a lot of people lose it because the algae changes sexuality and then it just dies off or too much food is being fed basically you run into so many issues um, spend the extra money for fertility frenzy yeah it's thirty dollars but you get so much more eggs out of it uh, spend the extra fifty dollars for reeds um, uh, RG complete it's made with Chloramax which helps with ammonia and you just it's just three milliliters that you feed like a four gallon bucket of water twice a day uh, spend the money for the trap you know the trap is so much easy and you'll see on hatch night basically what I do um, with that trap instead of spending your time trying to catch every single one and then you're like putting them through so much stress trying to like catch them and then they're trying to swim away and then you're going wasting water spend the extra money on TDO chroma boost chroma boost is the best food that you can feed fry um, by day four by day five instead of feeding brine shrimp that can cause uh, sudden fright syndrome and you lose clownfish that way it's literally they're dying from fright of of the brine shrimp which is what they need to eat but if you switch to TDO chroma boost which you buy from reeds too then they become easier to feed because it's like dust and it gives so much protein and so much uh, fatty acids and so much basically nutrients that you get crazy color out of all your little clownfish so these are like things you consider because if you want the best fries and you want the best clutches and you want the best like spend the extra money for the best you know um, don't try to just take shortcuts because in this in this hobby and this kind of 
different thing you know you'll learn that shortcuts do not work like if you just spend the extra money for the good equipment and the good stuff you'll notice that it just comes out a lot better uh, so pretty much again um, for the rest of the videos just enjoy the clowns laying eggs and doing what they do and the next video in this series will basically be um, the clowns day one, day two, day three, all the way up to hatch night. And on hatch night, what I do basically with the Vossen trap and how I catch them and how I transfer them over and preparing the fry tank basically. Um, so probably what I'll do is a minute of each day just like a little progress update on the eggs um, and then on hatch night uh, I'll show you well the day before hatch night I'll show you what I do pr to prepare the tank for ha hatch night um, letting it cycle letting it do everything and then hatch night itself grabbing all the fish into the little trap and then transferring them over it probably will be dark for the hatch part only because the eggs will only hatch at night once it's pitch black uh, once I notice that most of the eggs are caught again you'll just basically see a bright light uh, once I see all the eggs caught um, and into the trap then we can kinda turn on the lights for the rest of the video of putting them into the actual tank itself and the water and them swimming around you know the tankness I mean the color of the tank where I add some of the reeds RG complete to that tank too because they are very sensitive to light so you don't want to you don't want to basically have a bright light with none with the water not being tinted because then what happens is they swim against the glass and when they swim against the glass it's basically really bright for them um, and they're not liking that so I'll just show you pretty much all the equipment I have for the fry tank and again another video after that will be one day post hatch two days post hatch and so on until probably metamorphosis after metamorphosis the next video would probably be me transferring them into a little bit grow out tank and by then they should have a stripe or two and look like regular clownfish and pretty much that's it so enjoy the rest of the video guys let me know in the comment section if you have any questions uh, again this this breeding it does run into so many red flags but I'm more than happy to help with questions concerns like where I buy everything what I use because when I did it um, I was just following a text guide but it's not the same versus pictures versus actually seeing what happens and what you should do just because again videos on YouTube they'll show bits and pieces of different things and it's like pretty much fall, uh, fill in the blank so it's there's never been that I've found a blog from the everything from the food to the actual they're in a hatch tank and what they really use so that's pretty much my goal with this series of videos it's just to help people go out there enjoy the hobby enjoy breeding enjoy watching the fries grow and you know swim with each other and making clownfish balls and it's just it's something you you know if any wannabe breeder should experience and have fun with and once you get a process going for you just stick with that process like don't let anybody tell you oh I think this works oh I think this works oh maybe this you should try this if it works for you just do it and stick with it this is just what works for me what I've collected from different guides to basically say like hey this is my final my finalized guide for breeding clownfish and getting them to a sellable size alright guys enjoy the rest of the video and again any likes are appreciated any follows tell your friends 
Tell your neighbors. Tell anybody who you know has a pair of clownfish. Maybe they want to breed event eventually. Um, and just let me know if you have any questions or comments. Alright guys. Enjoy the rest of the video.